welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I am Jessie. Thank you so much for stopping by today, guys. I'm super excited for today's video. It is a what's for dinner video, and we had so many new dishes this week, and I cannot wait to share them with you as well as, guys, there's a dessert that I'm gonna share, and you are not gonna wanna miss out. That was so fantastic. Um, Actually, Jeffrey's grandma had made us kind of something similar. I added a few different things that I've never added to the recipe before. And I made it even better, even though I didn't think it could get any better. Anyways, guys, let's get into this. All right, guys, so I'm turning my stove on. I got a pan here and some extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna go ahead and get that going in the pan. Just probably a tablespoon or two tablespoons. I set up my pot over there going because I'm gonna be making some gluten-free macaroni and cheese from Kraft as a side dish. So I got my water getting ready to boil there. I diced up uh, probably a half an onion and then a really small green pepper that I had left cut up. I'm gonna use it up, guys. If you don't like onions or peppers, you don't have to do this part of the recipe. Um, it's just what I'm doing. I'm throwing all this together, just the stuff I have, and kind of playing off a recipe that I already have made up. Um, some salt and some pepper. One of these days, I will make the actual original dish for you guys. I actually came up with that when I was younger, and I used to do home ec class when I was homeschooled, and I would have to come up with dishes for like my dad, because um, he was my teacher. <laughs> So it was really fun. He taught me a lot about cooking and the sanitation with cooking and all of that. Then we go to the grocery store and he taught me how to shop and all that stuff. Guys, it was fantastic. Great memories. Thank you, Dad, if you're watching this. So I'm gonna saute these up real quick. And then we're gonna throw this in with some hamburger and add some other stuff, mix that together. And then we're gonna make these delicious little patties, guys. I'm telling you, this is gonna be so good, so fantastic. Okay, while these are getting cooked up, we're gonna start on our meat mixture. Yeah, guys, that looks kind of gross. I just saw my meat out, so there's more juice than normal. Anyways, you got your ground beef. I'm gonna put some garlic powder. This is one pound of ground beef. And you're gonna take some onion powder. Just a smidge of salt, some pepper. You're gonna put in one egg. And then we're going to take some Italian style breadcrumbs. These are the gluten-free full circle ones. Um, guys, if you aren't gluten-free, use regular breadcrumbs, you know? Essentially, these are gonna be like little meatloaf hamburger patty situations, and it's gonna be delicious. So one fourth of breadcrumbs go in there. And then I'm gonna take some light mayo. You can use regular mayo if that's what you get. You don't have to put the mayo in at all if you don't like mayonnaise. Leave it out. I'm gonna put two tablespoons of this. My lovely assistant, my hubby Jeffrey, is going to mix this up for me because I don't like touching that stuff. <laughs> I don't know if you guys knew this about me, but I'm a hand model. <laughs> that's all I'm good for. Take up these beautiful sauteed up onions and peppers. I'm gonna toss that in here. I'm gonna go ahead and put my pan back on the stove because we're gonna cook these burgers up. Guys, the reason I put extra oil because then I don't have to put any for the burgers. How fantastic is that? And then I'm gonna take my spoon here to mix these in because uh, I don't want to burn myself <laughs> freshly hot onions and peppers and this should cool it down enough that when I go to make the patties it'll be fine. Oh, for Jeffrey's coming back because I can't get my ring off so he's gonna have to help me with the patty. <laughs> I 
probably just normal size patty, like a burger patty size. I'm gonna make it into patty form. Oh, I'm gonna get both of these dirty now. Alright. And the dip them in the center. <laughs> Put them in the pan. Guys, my noodles for my mac and cheese are done, so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of follow the box instructions. But I'm gonna show you guys what I like to do, like my parents did when I grew up with box mac and cheese. So you're gonna go ahead and put in your butter, and then you're gonna throw some milk in. You're gonna throw your little fake cheese packet in. And guys, this is where the magic happens. You're gonna take a slice or two, if you want it super cheesy, of some American cheese and plop that in there. Guys, that makes it so much more creamy and cheesy and delicious. Stir that in. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit and then I'll keep mixing it. I gotta take you guys back to the burgers now. Guys, I'm gonna go ahead and flip these over. I'm just gonna smash that in. I'm just gonna flip it. Yeah. Probably be better to do this in a bigger pan or do smaller ones. Kind of smash a few of them when I was trying to flip them around, but that's okay. It's supposed to be burger-esque. It's not gonna be completely like a burger. It's obviously gonna crumble a little bit because there's a lot of moisture in there and meatloaf is usually like that. I would probably go with half cup of breadcrumbs. Guys, I've never made it this way before and uh, I was acting a little confident on thinking that it would fully work. <laughs> this guy's kind of uh, broken apart, but he's still gonna be delicious. I am not worried about it. That is the best part about experimenting in your kitchen. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some barbecue sauce. on top of these. And then I've got a little brushy doodad. I'm just gonna brush the sauce on top of these guys. Do your best with that guy. He's a little disastrous, so that's okay though. That's be delicious. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my heat off because those are done. And I just want that to get like warmed up. I cooked some maple. This is the black label, like Hormel uh, maple bacon. I cooked this up this morning. I'm gonna go ahead and heat up these strips. I'm gonna put like crumble some of them on top of this. Guys, they're so good. And here is a behind the scenes kind of thing that you never see. Me cleaning my dish up. So this will be exciting. So, I have these delicious looking meatloaf patty situations. Go ahead, get him on there. Guys, this mac and cheese is no joke. Like I'm telling you, add that extra slice of cheese in there, you will not regret it. And uh, we're gonna do one serving of mac and cheese. So I always get my cup measure. You could also use a scale, that's what I do. I count calories though, so that's why I do that. If you don't, just put mac and cheese on your plate. So I got a cup, and then I spread it out and make it look fancy. Ta-da, there's dinner. I'll give you guys a close up in a second. Oh, 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 guys, 
I almost forgot the bacon. How can I forget the bacon? The bacon is the best part. I have this delicious chopped up bacon that I heated up. I'm just gonna take it. I'm gonna take half of it on mine. Put it on there, guys. Shut the front door. This looks fantastic. This looks so good. All right, guys, here is finished that delicious looking mac and cheese. And let's not forget about these beautiful meatloaf burger patty situations, whatever you want to call them. Guys, this is dinner tonight. All right, guys, we're making a dessert today, and I'm super excited to share it. So when Jeffrey and I had first started dating, uh, his grandma had made this, we call it crispy cobbler situation. Um, it's basically like a dump cake, but I'm going to do it and add a bunch of stuff to it because uh, it sounds delicious. <laughs> so I'm using gluten-free Pillsbury Yellow Classic um, cake mix. If you're not gluten free, just use regular cake mix, you know. Do what works for you. And that's the thing, I think so many people shy away from recipes because it doesn't necessarily go with their dietary needs, but guys, you can always switch stuff up to make it work for you. Um, so I'm going to take about half of this bag. That's probably about half there. I don't know. Perfect. Half of the bag of that. And then I'm going to take some old fashioned gluten free oats, like I said, not gluten free, just use regular. I'm going to take one third cup of oats and pop it in there. to take some brown sugar and I'm gonna go in with a one third cup of that. Unpacked. They always uh, say in recipes unpacked or packed with brown sugar, so that's a worry for you. I mean, can you go wrong with a little extra sugar? I don't think so. Um, and then some vanilla extract. We're gonna put in one tablespoon of this, or teaspoon, sorry. Push the cap as a teaspoon. And then I'm gonna take some ground cinnamon. About a teaspoon of that. And then a whole stick of butter melted. Drop that deliciousness down in there. Guys, this is gonna be so good. I'm gonna have to resist eating the whole pan. It's gonna be really hard. Jeffrey might, you know, fight me <laughs> for the pan. <laughs> we both love this recipe, but I've never added all this other extra stuff to it, so we'll see. I think it'll be, you know, extra good. I just got to thinking about it. I was like, you know what would make this better? Yeah, I always yell at Jeffrey for saying that. But sometimes I think the same thing myself. And usually with this cake, most people will just go ahead and like, well, not cake, but like the dump cakes, I guess is what they call it. They won't mix the stuff together. Guys, I like to mix it together because I have found like sometimes you'll get clumps of like the cake like powder stuff that's not like, you know, saturated with anything. And that's just gross to bite into. So I would just mix it together just to play it safe. Okay, so I have it pretty much mixed up. Then I'm gonna take some sweetened coconut flakes. That's probably a third a cup too of those. You can leave the coconut out if you don't like coconut. Jeffrey's not a huge coconut fan, but I am. So uh, I want this dessert, so that's why I'm putting it in there. <laughs> you can totally leave it out though. We've done it without the coconut before, like the regular crispy cobbler, and it's fantastic, so. His grandma does like coconut and then like pecans, and I'm, I, don't ha I don't think I have any pecans on hand, so that's why I'm not doing pecans with it. But that's really fantastic too. This smells so good already. All right, 
I have a greased, uh, I think this is like eight by eight pan. And then I have some wilderness organic cherry, country cherry pie filling. I should get a spoon because that's not gonna come out of there. <laughs> not willingly anyways. All right. Is this the extra? Yeah, now with more cherries. Oh, come on. Oh, hold the phone. Get rid of that guy. The nice thing with this kind of recipe is you could throw a different fruit in there. Jeffrey and I, because I put cinnamon in it, we decided that cherries would go the best with that. Um, but you could do all sorts of different fruit. If you're doing other fruit, you might want to leave the cinnamon part out. I don't know. I mean, if you're doing apples, that would be fantastic. But if you're doing like the other like raspberries and stuff, I don't know how those would gel together. You could give it a go, see what you think. I don't know. Right. So we have our pie filling and we have this delicious topping that we're going to put on top here, guys. Just kind of drop it in there on top. Almost like a crumble situation. And then we'll just smooth it out over the top once we get it all in there. Guys. Oh, I already want to dig into this and it's not even cooked. <laughs> Struggles. My way in day is not going to go fantastic tomorrow. <laughs> Gotta live life every once in a while, right? All right. I'm just gonna kind of like smooth it out. All right, I have my oven at 375 degrees at Fahrenheit. I'm gonna pop this in for probably 25 minutes and I will come back when it's done. Guys, if you could smell my house right now. The kids came out of their bedroom from playing. I'm assuming because they smelled this and they're like, what is that smell, mom? <laughs> yes, it smells so fantastic. I'm not gonna wait for this guy to cool down. I know that's probably, you know, it'll look like a hot mess, but it's gonna be so good. I cannot wait to cut into this. It smells so fantastic. Guys, look how fantastic this looks. We're gonna turn it around and do a taste test. So excited i'm gonna burn my mouth i don't care because this smells so good I cannot wait I put a little bit of vanilla ice cream with it guys mm. Mm -hmm. mm. i'm speechless guys That is so good. You get like that sweet and tart from the cherries and then you get the butteriness from the butter that we threw in with the like cake mix and then you get like the crunch of the coconut and you get like a little bit of chewiness from the oats. to be very careful because uh, I'm gonna probably have more tonight <laughs> and I put it in my fitness pal tracker I put in the recipe it was only like 335 I want to say it was like 335 calories for one serving of just the um, Christy cobbler mix um, and that's for one sixth of a serving so keep that in mind if that's something you're worried about but guys I want to eat the little pan. Jeffrey is about to eat his. You want to take a taste and tell him what you think, Jeffrey? Yes. <laughs> it's so, it so good, huh? I'm weird about it. Oh, anyway, you don't have to be on camera. Jeffrey doesn't have a shirt on. I have a shirt on. <laughs> I'm gonna go wait till I'm back down in the piece. <laughs> That's what I said. We're gonna be fighting over that pan. I suppose we should share a little bit with the kids when it cools off. <laughs> okay. 
guys, look at that. It's not done melting yet. Underneath there is Gary's Quick Steaks, the corned beef one cooked up. And then I added in a can of sauerkraut and heated that all through. Added a block of cream cheese, melted that in, and then added like half a cup, probably maybe a little bit more than that, of some Thousand Island dressing. And then basically made like a Reuben dip. And then I added some shredded cheese on top, which is melting. And then over here, I have some Vigo rice, just the yellow, hold on, the yellow rice, the saffron one. Um, and we're going to put that on the bottom of the bowl and then put that uh, dip essentially on top of it. And that's going to be dinner, guys. Here it is, all plated up, looking fantastic. If I do say so myself, I'm so excited to go eat this. All right, guys, we're making Fiesta chicken casserole. I saw this recipe on Southern Country Living, and guys, it looked fantastic. And recently, I just watched Mama Cat's channel. Cat is her name. Um, guys, she made this, like, uh, foil packet dinner situation. It was, like, chicken with beans and corn and pepper jack cheese on top. I'm gonna take flair from that and add it into this, guys. It's gonna be so, so good. So, I've got my noodles cooking over there and then I cooked my chicken in the crock pot with um, some fajita seasoning um, and just a little bit of water and that is cooked through now. And so now, we're just doing the other stuff. You're gonna need one cup of sour cream. This is gonna be the sauce for our casserole. And I'll leave their link down below for both channels. Go check them out, they're fantastic. I'm gonna put in a cup of the Cantina Style Great Value Salsa. You're gonna put in one fourth cup of taco seasoning or like a seasoning packet. Those packets equal about a fourth of a cup. Put that in there. And then you're gonna put in half a teaspoon of ground cumin. I'm gonna do a little bit less because I'm not huge on cumin. So probably an eighth of a teaspoon. If you like cumin, go for the full half a teaspoon. And then you're gonna put in half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And you're gonna put in half a teaspoon of onion powder. She's rotini noodles. I don't have rotini noodles. So those will do the same thing. These are the Borelli gluten free ones, or Borella, not Borelli. <laughs> mix that in. They put beans in theirs. I love beans. Jeffrey does not, so I'm going to be a good wife tonight and not put them in. Woo! <laughs> And then I've got some corn. They say to use a 15 ounce thing of corn. This is 10, so I'm gonna throw the whole bag in there. It's just the uh, steam fresh bird's eye super sweet corn. Mix that in. Right, 
and right here is my ooh, some noodles fell. Right there's my chicken from the crock pot. Okay, I cooked this in the crock pot for probably I want to say three to four hours on high. These are boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and guys, look how soft they're just falling apart. Season them with fajita seasoning. Um, it's hold on, I'll get the bottle to show you guys. This Spice Supreme non MSG fajita seasoning. I got that at Woodman's, but I'm pretty sure you could find it anywhere that sells that brand. I don't know if I've seen that brand at Walmart before, though. Um, Otherwise, I'm sure you could find it online or just do something like that. There's just like salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder. Basically, the normal seasonings I would throw in something like this. And then I just put a little bit of water on the bottom just to make sure that it wouldn't dry out. Guys, this is so good. Marie boiled her, so you could boil your chicken. That's completely fine. I don't know. I have a thing with boiled chicken. I'm just not a fan. So I got that all mashed up. I'm gonna turn out spoons. That one's bigger. Mmm, that chicken is so good. All right. Have our bowl of goodness here. I'm gonna add all this beautiful chicken to it. I'm gonna save those pieces for me to snack on. And mix this together. This looks fantastic. Greased nine by 13 pan right here. I'm gonna put all this deliciousness in there. this out in your pan. So Marie used cheddar cheese, which sounds fantastic, but this is where Kat's idea comes into play from her channel. I'm going to put pepper jack cheese on top of this. So it's like a mixture between Kat's chicken idea with the chicken and the black beans and corn in a foil thing, and then her uh, Marie's with this casserole, guys. It's gonna be so delicious. If you don't like pepper jack cheese, totally go with the um, cheddar. I think when I was looking in the comment section, Marie said it could use some spice, and the pepper jack cheese is definitely gonna add that. She, I think she had suggested putting like jalapenos in it or something like that with it. So this will be perfect to give it that little spice. There was a comment too where she said um, that Calvin said it could use a little more creaminess. Um, I thought about adding some more sour cream or something, but I'll probably just add some more on top after it's done. Anyways, I'm gonna get this in the oven for 20 minutes. She put tinfoil over the top, so that's what I'm gonna do, and we'll be back. to give this a try yum guys here it is all plated up looking delicious this is dinner tonight see what they're saying about needing a little more like creaminess and stuff so we just added some sour cream on top and some more tag and it is pretty fantastic i would say eight out of ten very yeah, good definitely true. worth a try tonight we were doing ham steak i dropped these little ham steaks from woodman's a while back and then uh for a glaze i did cayenne pepper brown sugar honey and a little bit of water mixed up and added it on at like the last five minutes i baked it and then this is a uh, green bean casserole i did it just like the regular a little bit of milk uh cream and mushroom soup is a gluten-free one 
then um, I used this full circle organic gluten-free French red onions. Guys, those are pretty good. Um, and then these are the Idahoan buttery homestyle mashed potatoes. This is dinner time, All right, guys, guys. Thanks so much for coming along with me today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully I give you some inspiration of some meals you might want to try. Um, guys, if you're going to try anything though, that dessert by far, the crispy cobbler. So good. You're going to want to try it. Uh, recipes are down in the description box. Anyways, guys, give this video a big thumbs up, press that like button, subscribe to my channel, and click that little notification bell button so you're notified every time I post a new video. And we'll see you guys next one. Bye, guys.